Despite being one of the most successful personalities on TV and film in the past two decades, Ellen DeGeneres' story has had a number of difficult times and one where perseverance has proven to be her defining strength. When you look at Ellen today, you will often think of her successes, whether it be her stand-up career, hugely successful TV show in the 90s, becoming one of the most successful talk show hosts of all time, or playing notable roles in films, particularly Dory from the Pixar films. However, her story is much deeper than we might often realise, as she came from a challenging upbringing to face a number of challenges in her life and career, such as coming out as gay during one of the peaks of her career. It's not been easy and in this video, we look at how she persevered through the challenges to reach the success that she has, despite the many obstacles placed in front of her. So what exactly is Ellen's story and what is there to learn from her story? Ellen was born outside of New Orleans and spent the majority of her childhood there with her parents and her older brother, Vance. She has said that she loved to explore the area, saying, I rode my bike everywhere, all over the campus of Newcomb College, all over uptown. You know, people can grow up in New Orleans without realising how unique a city it is. I remember thinking that it is a really neat place. At 13 years old, her parents divorced and she had to move with her mother to Atlanta. During this time, she recounts how upset her mother was and used comedy to help her through the painful period after the divorce. As she says, my mother was going through some really hard times and I could see when she was really getting down and I would start to make fun of her dancing. Then she'd start to laugh and I'd make fun of her laughing and she'd laugh so hard she'd start to cry and then I'd make fun of that. So I would totally bring her from where I'd seen her start going into depression to all the way out of it. This is the first lesson to be learned of Ellen's journey, that humour and empathy can play a massive role in dealing with traumatic times. Even when things might appear at their darkest, there's always moments of joy and humour to be found. It's not just therapeutic, but a necessity in life. After she graduated from school in 1976, Ellen moved back to New Orleans, where she worked a number of jobs, including time spent in a law firm, restaurant jobs as a bartender and an oyster shucker. She also worked at a retail clothing store and as a house painter. While she'd work, none of these jobs were her vocation and she came to understand that she did not like following other people's rules and sought to have independence. It was at this time, now 23, Ellen started to work on a comedy routine, initially performing for friends before doing gigs at local coffee houses and at comedy clubs. Soon she became a master of ceremonies, or MC, at a New Orleans comedy club. From here she found her career started to take off, as in 1982 she entered a national talent contest held by the cable network Showtime, sending in a videotape of her stand-up act. She went on to win the contest, being given the title of the funniest person in America. From here, she started doing work nationally, where she'd do her comedy routines. In 1986, Ellen made history in her first ever appearance on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. This was an incredible achievement, as most comedians are only asked to do their stand-up routine and that's it, and a female comedian had never been asked to sit on the couch after a first time performance on the show. That night, Ellen not only debuted on The Tonight Show, but Johnny Carson invited her over to sit on the couch, breaking new ground. Here, we can understand the second lesson of Ellen's life. She worked hard, but chose to focus on her passion and interest in her vocation. There was no guarantee of success in comedy, definitely not in the certainties of pursuing the other jobs that she had gotten. However, she understood that she couldn't just accept doing a job to earn a living and gave up life that might offer certainties, but would lack passion and meaning. If you know you have to follow a certain vocation, it's important to follow through and pursue it, because not doing so will inevitably lead to regret and there's always potential to achieve massive success in taking a leap of faith. In 1991, Ellen was honoured as the best female stand-up comic at the American Comedy Awards. It was around this time she branched out to begin acting in a TV show. She appeared in a couple of short-lived sitcoms, Open House and Laurie Hill, 
before earning her own show called These Friends of Mine. The show starred Ellen as Ellen Morgan, an employee of a bookstore where the show focused on the lives of Ellen and her friends. When the second season started, the show had undergone major changes, including a change to its title to become Just Ellen. Following the changes, the popularity of the show grew, with viewers becoming more drawn to Ellen and her unique style of comedy. Following the success of the show, Ellen earned numerous nominations for Emmy Awards and won the Peabody Award for her work on the show. However, possibly the most important moment in the show's history came in the spring of 1997, where Ellen made history by having her character come out as a lesbian, becoming the first lead gay character on a network television sitcom. Susan, I'm gay. <laughs> The episode, called the Puppy Episode, garnered 46 million viewers and brought Ellen an Emmy Award for Best Comedy Writing. Not just a milestone moment for the show, but Ellen herself came out to millions with a cover story in Time magazine where she announced that she is gay. Despite these moments being major points for Ellen in her life and for TV at the time, during the 1997-98 season, Ellen began to lose viewers. It was suggested that the show had fundamentally changed when the main character's sexual orientation became the focus of numerous episodes. Some believe to this day that the network simply did not want the controversy generated by the announcement about Ellen's sexuality and at the time some advertisers had pulled out, as they feared offending viewers. Here, the network started adding warning labels to the episodes that showed Ellen kissing another woman or discussed her sexual orientation after which the show got cancelled following the 1997-98 season. Ellen has since said that despite the show's success up to this point, she was struggling with great difficulty during this period as she hadn't come out about her own sexual orientation, feeling like she was hiding a part of herself that had significant impacts on her mental well-being. This was in part the reasoning behind making the decision that she did on the show and with Time magazine as having to hide a part of who you are and not being able to be true to your feelings can have adverse effects. We're often put in this place in life, we try to repress certain feelings and in doing so often cause more harm to ourselves than we would if we were just honest. It might be painful initially, but the pain will subside. Following her show's cancellation, Ellen went through an extremely difficult period both professionally and personally. Her relationship and breakup with actress Anne Hesch had a significant impact on her, as she told People magazine, I went through a phase, whether it was true or not, where my perception was, everyone hates me now, and it felt horrible. She appeared in films such as Ed TV and The Love Letter, but none of them established her career in the movies. She tried to revive her career on TV, as in 2001 she started a short-lived sitcom called The Ellen Show, but it was never able to attract a large audience. Despite the setbacks, Ellen did manage to find some success, as after the terrorist attacks of September 11, Ellen was asked to host the Primetime Emmy Awards, a program that had already been delayed twice due to events that had shaken the entire nation. Ellen impressed with her work in what was described by Entertainment Weekly as a witty, respectful and wise performance. Following on from the success of the Emmy Awards, Ellen began to appear more often on television again. She hosted Saturday Night Live, appeared on an episode of Will and & Grace and occupied Centre Square on the game show Hollywood Squares. By 2003, Ellen was to be seen all over America, as she worked in stand-up with a hugely successful tour and had a HBO comedy special called Ellen DeGeneres Here and Now. During this time, she published a best-selling book of comic essays called The Funny Thing Is, and she lent her voice to what would become the highest grossing animated movie of all time, Disney Pixar's Finding Nemo. Towards the end of 2003, Ellen was once again the star of a self-titled television program, but rather than starring in a sitcom, she was the host of a talk show. In its first season, The Ellen DeGeneres Show earned positive reviews and solid ratings across the US, 
with it earning a record 12 Emmy nominations in 2004, the most ever received by a talk show in its debut season. When she heard the news about the Emmy nominations, Ellen responded with a comment in line with her self-criticising, slightly insecure comedic style. They told me you got nominations for every single category except the song, and I instantly said, what's wrong with our song? In addition to three technical awards, Ellen's show won the 2004 Emmy for Outstanding Talk Show, and here Ellen had finally found her greatest joy in her career to date, saying, it's the best job I've ever had. Her success in her career is mirrored in her personal life, as she's gone on to settle down with and marry model and actress Portia de Rossi. It's here we learn the most important and pivotal lesson of Ellen's storied life and career. Whatever life throws at you, it's vital to never give up, to keep going and maintain perseverance. To quote the beloved character she plays in Finding Nemo and Finding Dory, just keep swimming. When life gets you down, you know what you gotta do? I don't wanna know what you gotta do. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. What do we do? We swim. If you agree with the message of perseverance, let me know in the comment section below by commenting just keep swimming. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know with a like, consider sharing this with friends, and subscribe as we aim to help people live life on their terms by providing practical advice through inspirational content. Thanks for watching.